Uh, good evening. Let's call this meeting to order. Tuesday, June 5th, 2012. The time is uh, 6.06. Uh, meeting of the uh, Committee of the Whole for ELOC and County Facilities. Roll call, please. Here. 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 Esri. Here. Holderfield. Here. James. Here. Jay. Here. Kibler. Here. That's yours. Okay, we have a quorum. Uh, Ms. Brooks and Ms. Court did contact me and said they would not be able to make the meeting tonight. Uh, I seek approval of the minutes for the Committee of the Whole for May 8th, 2012. Moved by Mr. Mitchell, second by Mr. James. Discussion of the minutes, please. Approval. Oh, we already have that, Mr. Betts. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? The motion carries. Seek approval of the agenda and the addendum. Moved by Mr. Carter, second by Mr. Kurtz. Mr. Kurtz? Yes. Uh, I'm going to move to move the new work meeting on the microphone box. Microphone, microphone. Sorry. Uh, 8H on the ELOC agenda to please be removed from the uh, agenda tonight. Is there any objection to that? Any objection? Okay, seeing none, we'll take, take that off. Uh, I also would like to ask. Uh, Mr. Kurtz and Mr. Betts, uh, respectively, at, at the end of your session, to discuss whether or not you want to have the meeting next month in July. Oh, okay. It doesn't have to be set in stone, but we know what you'll say. <laughs> but generally speaking, we try not to have July call meetings, uh, so uh, either we won't have them or maybe we'll just have one or something like that. Um, any other changes to the agenda? Mm -hmm. okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Public participation. Um, we have one person who wants to speak uh, tonight, Ms. Deb Klein. <laughs> Do my address or anything? Just say name, name and where you from. Yeah. Okay, my name is Deb Klein. I live at 1043 County Road, Seymour. My husband, Bill, and I, as well as our mother, Mary Klein, are the property owners of the farm and buildings being discussed tonight. We are part of a family farm operation that spans six generations. Last winter, our family traded a farm we owned north of Mansfield for this new farm. We'd always wanted to get closer to our home, which is now within two miles. We were thrilled to have the opportunity to own this farm, which also includes irrigation for our seed corn fields. Along with the farming acreage came an existing set of buildings. These buildings are way too nice to abandon or let deteriorate. We need to find a use for them. They were originally built in 1989 as part of an agricultural research farm for a company called ICI Americas, which later became part of Syngenta. Many of these agricultural companies have consolidated their businesses and their locations so the need for this sort of office, lab, and shop by another agricultural company is limited. That's why we're here tonight. We have found another tenant that will take care of the site, as well as not impact the surrounding agricultural environment. They do not qualify for the current ag use designation, despite some of their research having agricultural applications. They will provide good jobs for Champaign County. We, our children, and our grandchildren all live close to this site and farm adjacent. So most of all, it's important to the clients to find a good match. We have been proven good stewards of the land. We and our family are in this for the long haul. Therefore, we are respectfully asking to change our zoning classification on this building site to light industrial. Thank you. Is there any, uh, anybody else want to participate in public participation at this time? Okay, thank you. Uh, communications from the board. 
Uh, let's go for Ms. Petrie. Thank you very much. Uh, communication is a belated happy birthday to Ralph Langingham. <laughs> happy birthday, Ralph. Okay, Mr. Kurtz. Thank you. Uh, on your desk is a letter that I received a couple of days ago uh, from Mr. Uh, microphone, please. Right. Look close to the microphone. I'm not hearing. Hello. That better? Okay. Yes. Uh, this letter was uh, sent to me, and uh, he asked me uh, uh, to disseminate it to the entire board. Uh, it concerns uh, PCBs and how it's affected this gentleman. And uh, he wanted the board and uh, to be uh, placed on the record. I've already given a copy to the secretary so that um, this is for your information. Thank you. Any other communications? Okay. Seeing none, uh, this will have the county facilities. Mr. Betts. Good evening, uh, County Facilities, uh, uh, Physical Plant Monthly Report. Um, any questions, comments? Yes. Oops, sorry. Um, I'm looking at this here and it says one week is 435 hours with four, full staff and then I'm looking at the total hours here of, of uh, what has worked and of course there was an, a holiday also but then there's also 209 hours of comp time just wondered where that is I noticed we don't have any overtime which is great but um, you know in some weeks it's 300 hours or whatever and if a full regular work week's 435 hours and how come we've still got a lot of comp left out for them the t comp time is accrued for <laughs> on call and on weekends and uh, they use that um, scheduled as a vacation time so they've always got a certain amount on the books so this all came for extra other than just what happens in the normal that is correct okay. Thanks. other questions or comments I'd entertain a motion to receive and place on file. So moved. moved by Mr. James, seconded by Mr. Carter. Discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, the same. Motion carries. Our monthly report for the Art Bartell um, pro uh, construction projects. On page 11 of your uh, uh, agenda, you'll see the um, monthly spreadsheet. The only activity has been uh, for the East Campus Site stormwater project and just a partial billing for this month of $1,290 to Burns Clancy Associates for just uh, shop drawing review office administration for this part of the project. We expect um, the material to be delivered on site uh, this week and hopefully maybe Friday or Monday actual construction will, will be starting. Questions, comments? Dan? Sorry. Do we have anything else with Russell Construction? Or Excuse is this me? The, is this the end of what we have with Russell Construction? Yes, that is correct. Because they've dissolved. Complete. Um, the next matter is the CCDI Inspection Coalition of Citizens with Disabilities. I was hoping to have another handout for you tonight. Uh, the CCDI did make a return inspection last Thursday and we had 75 to 80 percent of the items they noted uh hopefully corrected and uh i have not seen a copy or a copy has not been forwarded to our office yet from uh, the regional planning commission i expect to have something soon and uh, we'll just keep on moving on it patsy uh, just a question do you think we're on track to what you presented as the cost that will be for the county, I think it was seventeen thousand dollars. Yes, at this time I do not have. I'm still waiting on a couple more estimates okay. uh, to hopefully get the price down. Okay. And see where we're at. Thanks. Other questions or comments? <coughs> Moving on to chair's report. This will be easy. I don't have a report. Um, 
other business. Um, the other business that I would have is that we have a number of us who are on the committee have reviewed the RFPs. I have my stack of material, which is about this high. I've gone through it. I am willing to give it to others, and, and, and Jan is going to take it tomorrow, and then um, she's going to give it to someone else. So if people have that material, they're willing to share without having to duplicate, that would be very, very useful. Um, Geraldo, you want it, who? Is there any, any way you could expedite that a little quicker than going 20, going making 27 rounds? I would like to have one that I could flavor and look at and review instead of being on a timeline and then try to pass it on to somebody else? Go ahead, Dennis. Well, board members were told at the last meeting that if they wanted to request it, that they could, and board members who requested it have been provided with it. I will say it's a stack of documents about this deep. So um, if you can share them, of course we will appreciate it because even the time it takes to produce them um, is staff time spent on that. But if you want to request it, all you need to do is contact either me or the sheriff and we'll make sure you get them. And I know Pat, Patsy got a set, Carol has a set, I have a set, and I'm absolutely willing to share immediately. Chris? Tom, I'm sure I know the answer to this, but I assume these were submitted non-electronically. We have electronic versions, but we are not releasing the electronic versions because these documents are only to be provided to county board members. So even county board members cannot obtain the electronic copy? Well, if you may want to sign something that says you'll keep it electronically. Sure. <laughs> okay. okay. That being said, it's, Jen has mine, she'll pass it on and work it out. <laughs> um, designation of items to be placed in consent agenda. I don't think we have anything that's for action. Um, so there's nothing on consent or non-consent? Uh, no, meeting next month. Oh, the meeting next month. Um, Mr. J, I am going to be in Vermont in July, so it's up to you because I'm definitely not going to be at the meeting next month. I see no reason to have it unless you think there's a good reason. If there's no reason, I would just as soon not have it either. Okay. Is that a concurrence of the members of, of the Committee of the Whole? Voting. Anyone dissent from that? I'm going to consider that unanimous. We won't have a meeting next month. Okay, Mr. Kurtz for environment and land use. Good evening. Um, okay, 8A, our first uh, item on the agenda, Recreation and Entertainment License, Champaign County Fair Association, <laughs> Champaign County Fair Association, Second. July 20th to the 28th, uh, 2012. I have uh, Mr. Mitchell and Miss Ammons as a second. They really jumped on that. They like the county fair. I don't blame them. I like the county fair too. I like those those fr those fries that they sell. Those French fries. Ooh, those are good. Uh, are there any discussion on this entertainment license? Uh, all in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? Motion carries. All right. Uh, B. Zoning case 716AM-12. Williams and Deborah Klein and Mary Klein request to amend the zoning map to change the designation from Ag 1 to I 1 Light Industry Zoning District to allow limited reuse of a former agricultural chemical research facility. Whoa, I have uh, Mr. James and Mr. Keebler second. This, uh, well, let me make a statement first. Uh, in the packet, uh, the ZBA had not made its recommendation as yet. We have that recommendation here, it's on your desk. The uh, Zoning Board of Appeals voted unanimously to recommend enactment at their May 31st, 2012 meeting. And the, uh, all the information is in that packet. Uh, it's discussion, Aaron. Uh, to eliminate any possible conflict, I'm going to abstain from this. Okay. Uh, do I have uh, point of order, point of order. You need to why? Oh. You need to stay why? I need to stay um, why? Do the business relationship with the clients, uh, my electrical business. Um, okay, that'll, that'll do. Thank you, Aaron. Uh, Chris? I have a question for Mr. Hall. Um, 
we've been provided a reasonable summary, I think, of what Syngenta and ICI before that did at this location. Was that activity conducted by Wright because the research that they were doing and the production they were doing was related to agriculture? I'm trying to get a sense for what, to what degree the zoning ordinance can restrict industrial usage of any, if it has any agricultural character. Um, as far as I know, there, there was no permit for that. Um, I've seen various explanations that there was some seed research being done. If there was any seed research being done, then it was absolutely exempt. Agricultural chemical research in and of itself is not exempt, but uh, in the records I have seen some evidence of seed research. So at this point, I'm assuming that that was in fact exempt when it was constructed. Okay, so of any, regardless of the scale, regardless of the specifics of what's being done, if the research is, as you say, seed research or something related to agriculture, then you can essentially operate in the agriculture zone by right. But if a activity of exactly the same character, but being done on something not related to agriculture is done, that would require an industrial zoning? Yeah, seed research can happen anywhere in our zoning jurisdiction, even in, uh, literally, it can happen anywhere and we have uh, no authority over it. Okay, thank you. Ms. Haldefield. Um, just for point of clarification, um, on the requirements for the land resource management plan, um, since we haven't uh, determined that all of these policies are ordinances, um, are we now moving forward to um, utilize the land resource management plan uh, as the um, absolutes when someone is rezoning their property. So do we have this in the package because it's for the future? Um, are we utilizing these policies as ordinances? I guess I just needed some clarification because I was a little bit confused as to why we had such a thick packet and um, all of these, all of the criteria had to be met utilizing the land resource management plan as if they were all ordinances. So could you give me some clarification on that? Yes, the LRMP is not an ordinance. It's simply a plan. It has goals and policies. They are this county board's adopted land use policies. Mm -hmm. And so they play a big role in um, your decisions about land use. Uh, it doesn't have to be limited just to the LRMP. Uh, we have begun including that other item about, um, let's see. Well, uh, with MAP amendments, we've always considered the, at least for some time, the LaSalle and Sinclair factors. But literally, um, a MAP amendment is one of the least constrained decisions you make. And if there's more information that needs to be brought to bear, um, that can be done, but at a minimum, it would be your adopted land use policies. Okay, so um, when we are rezoning these properties, I, um, based on what the actual usage is, I'm ab absolutely in support of what they are uh, trying to accomplish out there, and I'm not trying to convolute this. I just would like to have maybe um, a better understanding. I understand we pass a land resource management plan, um, so every time we have a case when we're going to rezone a property, we now are utilizing all of the land resource management plan package just like this. So everyone has to follow all of the policies as if they're ordinances. Um, the degree of, of conformance is up to the board. Uh, the ZBA uh, tends to look at the policies as things that have to be met. Um, but again, the, the county board has great discretion in MAP amendments. Um, so uh, I would not want you to think that those things have to be followed like regulations, because they're not. Okay, thank you for that clarification. I appreciate it. John. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chair. Just um, if I could go back to what the point that Mr. Alex had brought up about this particular facility. I, I think <clears throat> to more clarify exactly what this facility, because I've known of this facility ever since its existence or its genesis, and that um, 
I, I knew people who worked there over the years, especially uh, uh, when the facility was owned by Syngenta, uh, large international uh, uh, agricultural business. Uh, when you think of chemical research out there, I think the first thing that probably comes to mind is they're out there mixing raw chemicals to get something. And that's not at all what was going on out there. Actually, I think a better term would be weed research because exactly what was going on out there were they were using um, already established EPA approved, state EPA approved and federal EPA approved chemicals out there to see what kind of benefits they could get from crop protection with respect to uh, weed eradication. Um, and I, I think there may have been some for insects too, but it was all about crop protection. There was no mixing of chemicals or combinations of, I, I, that were not approved, but there were no raw materials being brought in to make, it wasn't a chemical vat being brought out there. Um, I, th I think if you did a, a, a soil site test out there, you, you wouldn't probably find anything higher than what you would find from the standpoint of residuals in a, in a normal farming field out there, uh, the, the, the row crop field out uh, anywhere here in the county or any other county. So just for that clarification, it was for research. Uh, it was specifically for row crops uh, in particular. And like I said, all the chemicals that were used out there were licensed by the state and federal EPA. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Petrie? Uh, thank you very much. Um, I certainly am for um, reuse of buildings, and I do appreciate that the ZBA unanimously uh, approve this. That said, I do have some uh, major issues with this zoning change. And the reason I have the uh, issues with the zoning change has to do with what this then opens up down the line. When you look at the list of possible uses under an I-1, uh, this is like opening Pandora's box to have uh, this zoning uh, change to that. It has nothing to do with the present petition. I'm looking down the line. I did have an exchange with John to see if I could um, figure out a way to support this um, by discussing with him, putting something in the uh, special use that when uh, the, pre or the potential user is no longer uh, that user, that, it, that this revert back to Ag 1. Uh, if that was something we could consider, I could support this. Uh, the second thing is if you look at, um, I believe it's page 59. Uh, yes, page 59 of our packet. If you look at B2, in the I-1 district, it states uh, that <coughs> This zoning should be an area suitable for light industrial and manufacturing purposes and generally be connected to public sanitary sewer. This is not in that kind of location, nor is it connected to a public sanitary sewer. So there is a lot of forgiveness that needs to be going on to enable this without us being certain that the door then gets closed when and if the proposed use um, is done and it should revert back to Ag 1. When you look at the area out there, it's totally surrounded uh, by agricultural land. So those are my concerns. If we can come to some uh, way of adjusting this uh, to take those into consideration, I can support it. If we can't, then I can't support it. John, would you please respond, and then I'll go back to the discussion. The uh, paragraph B2 on page 59 that you referred to, that is simply a general description of where the I-1 district occurs. It's not from the zoning ordinance. It has no regulatory authority. It's just what you should normally expect. Um, Steve? I've known Bill Klein and Deb for 30 years, and O'Connor known them since they were born. And they're not going to sell that farm. The family 
buys something, they buy it for the long haul. He's got two sons involved in that operation, and they're not going anywhere. And I think there's going to be a lot of people in this room six feet under before they'd ever get rid of that farm. Um, Pius, did you, you had your hand up. All right, you want to sit in my, <coughs> sit in my chair? I've warmed it up for you. Yeah, uh, Yes, two questions for John. One, uh, Ms. Petrie talked about other uses for light industry. industry. Could you summarize mm -hmm. what those could be? Um, well, in fact, they're listed on pages uh, 60 through 62 of the uh, finding of fact that's in the agenda. Um, okay, uh, second question then is, she mentioned a possible reverting back to Ag 1. Is that even possible? Can you have reversions? If, if this board would impose a condition of that nature and the petitioner accepted it, you could, you could impose that condition. Okay. But the courts have always maintained that the petitioner needs to accept any condition. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, next, we'll have uh, Ms. Cheveria from the RPC. This is the RPC work plan update and the planning contract work plan for information only. Thank you. It seems like I was just here not too long ago. The first item that I have to speak with you tonight about is the status update of our current year work plan. Uh, right now we are about 40% complete with the tasks that you all outlined for us to do last year between November or December 1st of last year and November 30th of this year. Uh, more specifically, we have about 18 items on that work plan and 13 have been started. We have completed six of them. We do have a couple of items on last year's work plan that were rolled over into this year's work plan. Um, the first one was the Lisa update. Committee time on that project uh, took longer than the estimate we provided last year. Um, so it did go in till about, I believe, February or March of, of this work plan year and required about uh, 85 extra hours of time out of this year's work plan to complete that. And then uh, item 2011-18, it's an ordinance regarding uh, the Office of the State Fire Marshal. Um, so we have some of that complete, but it's one that has rolled over from last year as well. And then we had another item from this year's work plan that so far that we have completed that took extra time. Um, it's 2012-18. Um, so with that, we have a total of 245 hours that we are looking to postpone from the current year work plan for items that we have not yet done to a future year's work plan if you all decide to move that way. So basically, the, the delays were because of the LISA process and also defining the best prime farmland process that went in line with that um, earlier this year. At the bottom of the memo on your page 82 of your packet, you'll see that we have a recommendation for moving seven different items or reducing their hours uh, from this year's work plan to make up for the hours that we had to spend on those LISA and best prime farmland projects. And so those are highlighted on the status table on pages 83 and 84. While this is for information only, it is something we are recommending Thank you. for this year. See if there's anything else we wanted to cover here. Um, that's LRMPL implementation. Uh, yes. Susan, uh, Pines, I'm sorry. The question say is you're recommending it, yet it's for information. I'm sorry. We yeah. recommend it now. Everything tonight's for information only. We want to come back here in August to look for approval of the next year's work plan if, if you want to, and also to help finalize the, the status of this year's okay. work plan. Sure. We, have to, we still have work we can do in the meantime. Okay, we're so. not asking for any action tonight. Right. Okay. Uh, anything else, Susan, on that? Not on the LRMP part. I okay. We want to move on towards the, uh, the next item with the planning work, contract work plan. If there are no other questions on the status report, any, I'd be any happy to. I'm sorry. Any questions on this portion of her presentation? 
Okay. All right. So, All right. So for the next agenda item, we have the proposed fiscal year 2013 work plan. And I believe that starts on approximately on page 85 of your packet. Working with Deb, we, we included a 2% um, salary increase provisionally until you decide to approve or not approve this work plan. That goes in line with uh, anticipated cost of living increases. Um, and so that contract amount that we are uh, talking about would be 71922 And then in the packet, you'll have three different attachments. The first one is the attachment A, the general work plan for <coughs> proposed for next year. And it includes 1,350 hours, focusing on implementing the LRMP, recycling, and some general planning services requests that would be at your behest to our group. And then attachment B is contains the specifics of what we propose to do for you for the LRMP implementation. Um, we did this in coordination with John Hall, as always, and um, we do our best to make these estimates, obviously, with the lease in the best prime farmland. We find that we're a little bit short, but that happens. We do what we can to provide the estimates for you tonight and the costs associated with each item in the proposed work plan. And then attachment C is not a part of the proposed work plan. It's just items in the LRMP that are slated for the first three years of implementation after the adoption of the LRMP. So it's kind of like a laundry list that you can choose from if you don't like anything in the proposal that we have for you in attachments A and B. So we can move things around if you'd like. So what we're looking at, like I said, is to talk about this tonight, just provide it for information, and we would love to get any comments you have by about mid-July so we can come back to you in August with a more finalized proposal. John. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would like for you to consider dropping item 11 and 12 out of your 13 uh, work plan. I don't think that we're in a position to take on that kind of a responsibility, and that's a $23,283 plan that I'm, I think is premature. Where, where are you? Carol, uh, He's Carol. talking about items on page 91 of the work plan, proposed work plan, I believe. 87? Well, it's 87 in the one I'm sorry. looking at. Oh, you're looking at a short list, sorry. talking on page 87, yes. John. Okay. On page 87, 11, and 12. Carol, you next. I just wanted to ask. Uh, I want to go back to the other one. I didn't understand why. I, I remember you all bringing us a work plan for 12, and then you went over 80 hours on 12's work plan, and I don't see and understand why that is. And then I cannot understand the difference between what the zoning and planning department is supposed to do and why we are contracting all of this with you. I don't, I don't understand that. Of course. For the first item, the 80 hours, um, and John and Al can also speak to this, uh, with the lease document, we had a work plan. We had a, a plan for completing that particular project that started last fiscal year. And because it was not completed in time for the end of last fiscal year, staff was asked to continue with the process, Susan Monty in particular, to continue with the committee working to make sure that document was finalized. And she had a lot of uh, back and forth with committee members providing new information. So it was 80 hours of time spent from this work plan to finish it. So do you, uh, you exclusively, your department exclusively do, do work for the county? Is that what you do? To my knowledge, that's the case. We have, that's our contract right now. I don't know if they work with others. I don't believe they do for planning services. I see. Uh, Stan? Uh, I was wondering if John might comment on item 11 and 12, why that was put in there, because uh, we need a better clarification of what you think. Uh, I tried to tell the group that I, I thought the, you know we needed to have this done and that eventually with some of the new codes coming from the state that we need to be looking at this, and I just needed you to say why you thought it needed to be in there. Well, uh, it only needs to be in there if the committee is interested in knowing how feasible adoption of a building code is. Um, frankly, I wish we could have provided more information uh, at last month's meeting, but it was clear that uh, the amount of work that had been proposed just wasn't enough to answer those questions. Now, I think that um, Susan has told me that there's no guarantee that, that, that uh, items 11 and 12 would take 450 hours 
but I believe that 450 hours should be ample in order to provide the kinds of quality information this committee likes to see, and in fact needs to see, before they make a decision like that. It, it may not take 450 hours, but it, it could be done in 450 hours. Thank you. All right. Chris? Um, I would, I guess, concur with uh, John Jay on this. I mean, I think I'm going to put on my Kreskin hat here and, and uh, make a prediction, but I don't see there being uh, political support at this, uh, on this county board for uh, advancing the idea of a building code, uh, for better or for worse. It does strike me that there are some pretty compelling issues that we are facing uh, regarding you know, potential ways of funding the airport, uh, looking at uh, what other counties are doing to uh, make up for lost state revenue. I mean, there are, it seems like there are a lot of things that if we had a skilled planner available for 450 hours, it seems like there are better ways that we could be spending their time and our money. So I guess I would uh, challenge my colleagues on the county board to come up with some other suggestions for how we might be able to use those hours, uh, even if they're not strictly related to the LRMP. We will present other options to you, Chris. Uh, we, have, we have discussed that at length. Um, we wanted to make sure that there were contingencies just in case of this, so uh, we will have those for you as well. Um, I have Ralph. Okay, I'd like to make two First of all, I'm sorry, microphone. microphone. I'm sorry, microphone, please, Ralph. <laughs> There's even a note now, Ralph. Has everything calmed down now? I'd like to make two observations. First of all, this is for information only. That's correct, sir. Secondly, the matter of a building code is something we've been batting back and forth, and I see no reason why we should avoid finding out about it. Thank you. Uh, Carol, I'm sorry, Steve, you haven't talked on this subject. Yet. How many hours have we got in building codes with what Susan's already done? 215. 200, if you didn't hear, that was two, there's already 215 hours in this project. Uh, I have uh, Steve, was, is there any other discussion on the, uh, okay, Pat, uh, Patsy? Uh, well, um, I made this comment when the contract came before us uh, for this year, and I'm not changed my mind one iota, and that um, this arrangement I find um, not in the best interest of the use of the taxpayer money and the best interest of planning, and this having to shift hours. If we were running, had a planning office that was doing all of this, if something ran over, things would be shifted. We wouldn't be, say, over 80 hours over because we spent too much time on the lease because that was necessary, and therefore we don't do this. Uh, this arrangement is just so inefficient and not best practice in relationship to planning. Steve? Irrelevant comment, I'm sure, but the best possible decision we could make would be to have a tombstone carved and inscribed rest in peace for this program at 7.40 p.m. on June 5th, 2012. I'd feel a lot better. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. O'Connor. Uh, okay, any other discussion on this, Carol? <laughs> Since it's for information only, I think it's important that the board provide information as to what the board wants to be done in 2013. That's really critical. The other thing is that some of the activities like recycling events coordination, I would not recommend, I won't be here, that you spend 150 hours on the coordinating recycling events where the city of Urbana, the city of Champaign, Savoy, all of them have recycling programs. I think there needs to be some shifting in relationship to this. I, I agree with Ms. Petrie that there needs to be uh, looking at our own planning department as, in relationship to what services we really, really want RPC to focus on, i.e., maybe the building code should be just one thing. I don't know. But the, the board needs to make a recommendation as to what's most important in the use of this time and not just kind of general projects. And I find the recycling one to be a general project. I don't know, I've, I don't recall a conversation at this board level saying we want a coordinated recycling project done and why we should be paying for that. Yeah. Well, this is not the type of recycling that the cities do. This is special uh, events where you're collecting things like 
appliances and computers in. And each year that we've done this, the amount that has been saved from going into the landfill just keeps going up and up and up. And I think that is very important. And uh, I would support that wholeheartedly. And if I could just add to that, um, the cities do have those major recycling events, but the only way county, county residents can participate is if the county is also participating in the coordination of those recycling events. So those are countywide events, and everyone's putting resources towards them. Okay. Thank you. Susan? We'll, we'll get back to the board uh, next month. In August? Uh, in August, yes. No, we won't have anything in July in July, hopefully. I will state that in a moment. All right, let's move on. Um, AE. Oh, wait. Oh, you got the recycling. Okay. We'll go to F. Uh, approval of a resolution approving a partial release of judgment lien on property at, 20, at 1211 West Washington, Champaign. So moved. Stand. Second. Mr. Keebler. Uh, discussion. Uh, there was a, a drafting error in the resolution. Uh, the, the case number in the second paragraph should read 2010 OV 148. What page is that on? It's on the uh, resolution that was handed out tonight. Oh, the resolution. Okay. I have that on my desk. Okay. All right. And the phrase memorandum of judgment in paragraphs two and four should read judgment lien. What is this? Judgment lien. And the third, in the third paragraph, the word the phrase memorandum of judgment should just read judgment. I have a corrected version, but these are only errors of form. And I would ask that um, that, that, that any motion to approve the resolution include those changes. Thank you. Uh, any, any, uh, that's so, uh, okay. Matt, you want to move that? Yeah. Okay. We already, we already have a motion on the floor. Yeah. Just accepting the I accept, to accept the change. I made the motion. That's fine by me with the change. Okay. Stand. And keep them. Okay, on second. Got it. Okay. Carol? I just want to, I don't, I don't understand what this is. Okay. So, I want to explain. Uh, Bernard Ramos is the title holder of several uh, parcels in the city of Champaign, or throughout, uh, he's the title holder of a few parcels in the city of Champaign. Um, this is a problem property. The liens on the property far exceed the value of the property. Uh, the, the, uh, his attorney has uh, worked out a deal which would allow the transfer of, these property, uh, of this property with the release of liens. It would, uh, the transfer would allow the property to be put to productive use, uh, but in order for the uh, deal to happen, the county would have to release its judgment lien as to this property. This release would not release the judgment lien as to any other properties owned by Bernard Ramos in the county. And, and uh, what would be um, your recommendation for the county board to support that? Well, uh, I'm, of two, I'm of two minds uh, on this. I think it's ultimately a policy call for the county. I think uh, I have two functions in this case. One is as a prosecutor in the criminal contempt case. And uh, as, a, as a prosecutor, it's, it's difficult to um, stomach negotiating with someone who's wanted on a warrant for, uh, <laughs> for, for ignoring the court's orders. But taking off that hat and putting on my hat as a civil attorney for the county, this is a, a transaction which would put the property to productive use. It would, uh, Mr. Ramos is receiving no money from this transaction. Um, I think uh, the city of Champaign wants this transaction to happen because it would put the property to productive use. Uh, and, and as a purely civil matter, uh, I would, uh, I, I think it, it's a commendable resolution. Stand, uh, you still have something I just wanted to ask him what the productive use would be. Uh, uh, it's my understanding that a residence is going to be built on this property. We'll and have taxes on. It back on the back on the tax rolls. Stan? Well, I guess the way I looked at it, I'm like, I, I, as far as the Ramos is as much trouble as they've been county, I wouldn't want to see them get any leg up, but when I looked at the facts of this and you're looking at the lien holders, uh, there would probably be a possibility we wouldn't collect anything even if it ever did come to be sold. So the, we're getting $1,000 out of that from what I'm reading. So my guess is 
you we still have the other liens and they're still going to be having their day in court so i see it's as a no-win situation we ought to just go ahead and approve it so we can get back to uh, better use and get it out of the hands of the people that now have it but one question when they cut those checks because I've been at some real estate deals, and I know how real estate agents are. All those Whoa. checks will be cut to the different entities and signed right down there. Not that, you know, like me, I would want all the money in my hand, and I'd leave the room and never come back. But I mean, they'll cut them out to the proper authorities. The transaction is going to be handled through Mr. Ramos's local attorney, and they'll and tender. So it. we're lucky to be getting that thousand dollars at this point. You're correct. If this were, if all the liens were foreclosed on in the normal order of priorities, we would not receive any money. Thank you. Chris and Pats. Oh, Microphone, please, Chris. Who is Paul Zarucki? And what's his? Paul Zarucki is a, is a uh, local property owner. I believe he's uh, the purchaser in this transaction. Oh, so I'm sorry, he's the, per he's the purchaser? He's the person who's building the residence on. Okay, then who are Robert D. and Linda Parr? May, may I have a moment? Excuse me. Yeah, sorry. The only reason I'm asking Mr. Zerke was on the letter that was, was recipient of the letter that uh, Mr. Gordon sent to you and the city of Champaign. No, you're, you are correct. It is the parts who are the purchaser. If I can have a moment, I can, okay. I can answer your question. Just wanted to make sure we understood who all the parties were in this uh, unusual transaction. <laughs> Patsy. Uh, Mr. Pletcher, I went out to West Washington, and there's nothing labeled... Uh, 1211, I had trouble identifying what this uh, property was. And I didn't have a plat map with me to go with the descriptions. Can you help me? Or did he leave? I'm sorry, you want me to describe the, the property yeah, to you? I, I, went, I went out to look at it, and there's nothing 1211 marked on West Washington. I'm not exactly sure what you're asking me to do. Well, is it basically a fence, a vacant lot? Is yes. what it? Oh, it's that's what it is. Okay, thanks. Um, mine is not a substantive uh, question at all. I just want to, uh, when we do vote on this, I am going to abstain because my office has a long-standing litigation pattern with Mr. Zeruki and with Mr. Ramos. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> <laughs> All right, any further discussion? All right, all in favor? All right. All right. I'm sorry. I apologize. I'm sorry. We're still waiting on an answer to my question. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm, I'm, on you. I'm sorry, Chris. Go to you. I want to know who everybody is. Okay, one second. Mr. Betts? I'm sorry. This is going to take me a few minutes. My, I apologize. Um, I note that he's not listed in the... In the closing documents and I'm not sure why he was listed on that letter. Let me, I can make a phone call and I can get Okay, no, that, that's fine. As long, he's not a party to the transaction though, as far as you know? Uh, that's correct. Okay, th I think that's good enough for me. Thanks. Thank you. All right, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion Same. carries. I have a note that somewhere. Okay. Um, then finally on G, final recommendation to the County Board for Zoning Ordinance Text Amendment. Request preliminary recommendation for approval of a text amendment to the Champaign County Zoning Ordinance in zoning case 701-8T-11 to amend certain wind farm standard conditions. So moved, Mr. Second. Mosier. Second, Mr. Schroeder. Uh, this comes uh, back to us from uh, an approval on, in May, and uh, we've gone through the process and we did a preliminary approval back in May. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Monthly report. You have a monthly report from May on your desk. And I I don't have any other business. Any other business? We have any, what's that? July. Oh, July. I, we have uh, nothing for July, Mr. Chair. So it's up to you. No, no I'm, I'm not coming back in July unless anybody else wants to join me for a little picnic. But uh, we, have, uh, we don't have anything on the agenda for July, so... Uh, uh, we won't have anything on our agenda then. Um, do we have anything on the consent? Is G? F and G. G? F and G. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, consent? F and you have an abstain. Oh, F, I don't know. Oh, abstain. That's right. So only G okay. on the... Uh, Thank you. So just G is on the... Uh, and that's it for us. Thank you.
Okay, next I item on other business. I seek approval of the closed session minutes from May 8th, 2012, sessions one and two. Move. Move Mr. Rosales, second Mr. Mitchell. Discussion? Is that all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Uh, we have two closed sessions tonight. Um, one, well, we have two on the agenda, but Mr. Fletcher tells me we, we don't need the one. We don't need B. So we're just going to have item A. Is there somebody to move that? Mr. McGinty? I'm moving that we enter into closed session pursuant to 5 ILCS 120-2C3 to consider the performance of the occupant of a public office. I further move that the following individuals remain present, the recording secretary. Second. Second. Mr. Alex? Uh, roll call. Yes. 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 Yes.